Hi everyone! Today I have another longer awaited video that I have promised you for a while. I finished my Open University degree, which I feel like all of you know by now, but I promised you a video with a full review of every single module and the whole thing. It might be a bit long, but hopefully it answers every single question that you might have. And I know not many people talk about this kind of thing on YouTube and it's very difficult to find normal people review of Open University courses and by normal people I mean not super... I don't know how to say it but every time I looked into reviews you'd find the people that are like really 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 into studying and really good at everything so it was difficult to like figure out if they were just like really good at it or if it was actually a good module so gonna give you that average person overview of everything and you know I got my Open University degree here. I got my Bachelor of Science Honours in Mathematics and Physics, which is Q77 at the Open University if you're looking it up. Been given to me, granted upper second class honours. I'm so so happy with this. I don't even don't even know how I've managed it, but yeah, it took me five years part-time. Usually six, but the first two years I did 90 credits instead of 60. Yeah, I wanna go through every single module that I took, let you know what I thought about them, especially for the level 3 ones. I feel like it's very interesting because you can choose the ones that you want to do. So yeah, the others, you kind of stuck with them. But sometimes if you're thinking about doing maths and physics or you don't know if you want to do that one or the pure physics one or something else, this should hopefully help you understand what the degree is kind of like and what the modules are like. So I'm gonna have a breakdown of all the modules here on the timeline and down in the description box if you're just interested in certain levels or certain modules, so just go to those. But otherwise, I'm gonna go and start with all of them, starting with level one, which I feel like it was a long, long time ago, but I had to go through all my things that I had done before. And one thing to note is that for some of them I can still see my scores, for some of them are not able to, like the specifics of each TMA for example. So yeah, I'll give you the stuff that I have, but if I'm not giving it to you, then that's because I don't have it. I'm sharing everything that I got and, you know, because I find that that's a good way to know if it was easy, if it was not, you know, that kind of thing. So I feel like it helps. And yeah, again, overall, I got a 2-1, um, upper second, is that what it's called? Upper second class honor, so that's what I got in the end. I'm gonna start with S111 questions in science. I got a distinction in that one. I got an overall 90, which is very, very good. But that is a very, very simple, easy class. It doesn't have an exam. So it's very easy to, you know, do it with the coursework, which you can look at books and everything that you have. There's a few experiments in that one, which you actually have to spend money on. I had to buy like LEDs and screws and that kind of thing on Amazon to do the experiments, which was a bit like, I don't know, I felt a bit like I shouldn't be doing this. It was very simple experiments as well. It wasn't even like something that was teaching me anything. I think it's a good module if you have never studied anything science related or if you're doing it as way way after you've done your schooling and you have forgotten all about it or it was you know if you're older and the stuff that you studied back in the day might have not been updated to current things then maybe it's good but other than that it's a very very easy module i thought it was slightly a waste of time just because i already knew all of it i had been studying science up until the age of 18 throughout my life. I started this when I was 23, 24, I can't even remember. But yeah, I felt like I already knew all of it. It was very, very easy for me. So yeah, I got a 90 in the end. There's always, you know, little things that they're like, oh, you didn't say this, so I'm gonna take some marks from that. But very, very easy to get a distinction in that one, especially if you've done any science related classes in the past. Then we have MST 124, which is Essential Mathematics 1. I got a grade 2 pass in that one. And the OS OCAS, I'm gonna call it OCAS, I don't know if it's OCAS and OES, I don't know. Basically, my assignments, I got an overall 92. The exam, I got a 72. You're gonna find here that I'm very good at coursework, I'm really good at understanding things and in my own time writing it down but in the pressure of an exam with the time limits and with having to remember stuff I'm not necessarily as good so yeah I do understand all the concepts and I feel like I get it all but when it comes to memorizing stuff 
I'm not that good, so I don't do as good as in exams as I do in coursework, which you're gonna find. Grade 2 pass, 72 for the exam, 92 for the coursework component. This one, I uh, feel like the first few, and this is what I remember, the first few units were super fast. I didn't have time to grasp the concepts, the concepts properly. It didn't allow me to learn them properly, and this module is super, super important for the rest of the degree. It goes through all the really important things that you're gonna need the rest of the degree. So yeah, I feel like it was a bit fast, but you can take your annotated handbook to the exam, which is always a plus. You can write things on it, examples, that kind of thing. So it's always helpful to have an exam and it introduces uh, integration, which I had never studied before. So I feel like I needed a bit longer to understand it properly in the beginning, because then after that, I just struggled with it a little bit. So yeah. It also introduces Taylor polynomials, which are one of my mortal enemies and yeah, hate it, but I wish I would have paid more attention to it because you need it later on and I just felt like, I don't know, I didn't pay as much attention as I should have. I didn't know that I was going to need it as much as I did later on for both the maths and the physics side, but yeah, definitely pay more attention to it than I did because yeah, you'll need it. But then we have MST 125, which is basically the second part, is Essential Mathematics 2. And I also got a grade 2 pass in it, and I did slightly better in the exam. I got 77 in the exam part and 90 in the assignment side, so very similar but slightly better at the exam. This one had four ICMAs, which I got some low scores and some high scores, and then three TMAs, which I got over 90 on all of them, which is really good. I found those quite easy and just three of them. And it helps you bring up the assignment side. You can also take your annotated handbook to the exam, which is perfect because, you know, you have to, you don't need to remember all this stuff. Later on in life, you're not going to need to know that stuff by heart. So yeah, it's good that you can take the annotated handbook. I preferred it to the MST 124. I thought it was more fun to me. And it introduced eigenvalues and that kind of thing, which I actually liked during and later on it comes up in other, in other modules as well and I quite liked it so I definitely prefer this one to MSD 124. And that's for level 1. Going into level 2, the first one is S217, Physics from Classical to Quantum and that is my favorite module of the whole degree. That's the one that I actually enjoyed the most. I got a distinction and again I really really liked it. I had for the assignment side I got 94 and for the exam side I got 84 so I did quite well. It had 6 TMAs and I got anything ranging from 89 to 97 on those so I did quite well. I really really enjoyed this module. I thought it was an overall well-rounded module that introduced basically every single topic within physics and they managed to properly give each topic their time and enough for you to learn it and enough for you to understand what different things are within physics and this is the module that introduced sort of waves, particle physics, and quantum physics to me. Before this module, I had never in my life learned anything about quantum physics. And I had no idea that I liked it. And after studying this module, I was like, wait a minute. I know I like astrophysics, and I still liked it at that point. But I was like, what is this quantum physics thing that I'm learning about? And I really, really enjoyed it. You have an equations booklet to go to the exam with, and that is separated into units. So my top tip, which is what I did, I am very convinced this is what helped me get an 84 at the exam is that what I did is that equations booklet had the units but each equation didn't have anything it doesn't tell you what the equation is it just tells you units 1 to 5 here's the equations that you use so what I did was learn what each unit was so unit 1 is this unit 2 is this so when the exam started the first thing I did on the equations booklet they gave you where it said units 1 through 5 I wrote down the topics that that is. So whenever I had a question, let's say I got a question related to electric currents, if I knew that was unit whatever, I had already wrote down in the paper what that section was. So I immediately just knew to go to that one section in those equations. And I think that helped me save time. Before the exam, I literally looked at it and I was like, okay, I've got it. As soon as I was able to write down that's the first thing I did and I honestly think that helped me so much with that exam. I did a similar thing with others as well and that really helped me so 100% recommend doing that. 
Again, it had everything within it, like classical, I'm reading it, classical Newton stuff, magnetism, electric currents, optics, waves, particles, quantum, thermodynamics, everything. So if you're trying to figure out what you like about physics, that's your module. The next one for level two and the last one for level two is MST210, Mathematical Methods, Models and Modeling. I got a grade two pass in it, 89 in the assignment side and 73 in the exam side. Again, not very good at the exam side. Fine, again, for a grade two pass. It had eight TMAs, which is crazy. And some of them were quite long and some of them, I can't remember what it was, but there was like an actual mo method module that you had to do that was super long and it wasn't really guided properly. So I didn't like this module very much. I remember doing some of the TMAs on flights going to New Zealand and like lounges at airports and that kind of thing. So I do have awful memories of this. And because it had so many TMAs, as soon as one was done, you had to start the new one. But when I took this module, it was my only module thus that year. So if you're trying to do what I did and do more credits than you need to, please leave a whole year for this module because it does take a lot of your time. It introduced a lot of motion things like oscillators and that kind of thing, systems of particles and how they interact with each other. And also a uh, Fourier series, which Fourier series, is that how you say? I don't know, but that's my other mortal enemy that I hate. And it comes up later on and ugh, I just cannot, I know, not my thing. Level three, and this is the one where you can actually pick the stuff you study. So the ones that I did, the first year was M343, applications in probability and I'm quite happy with that decision because I got a distinction I got an 89 in the end and it had three TMAs and I got 71 72 and 88 on those so okay you can also take your annotated handbook to the exam which again that's always a plus and it was very easy I found but it started out really really fast the first few units introduced the essential the fundamentals of probability and it did it so fast that I literally for the first five six units I had no idea what I was doing I was doing it and I knew what to do but I didn't understand it and I just wish it would have started a bit slower and I would have taken more time to do the first few units and understand what I was actually doing because that would have helped me the exam was worth a hundred percent which I hate when they do that because again, I'm not very good at exams. So yeah, even though I got, you know, 72, 71, 88 on the TMAs, that counted for nothing. So no point doing well on them because yeah, other than for learning, but they don't really count. So that's the only thing about it that, yeah. But overall, I'm quite happy that I did that one. It didn't really, you couldn't really apply it to any of the other physics modules or anything, but at that point, level three, I was a bit done with things. So I was quite happy that it was more on the easy side, if that makes sense. And then I did S382, astrophysics. And I love astrophysics, I love the topics, but I was not a fan of this module whatsoever. I got a grade two pass, 71 in the end. So on my lower side, it had three ICMAs and five TMAs. So very, very heavy. The exam counted most, but some of the assessment counted. This is the one where I had a group project, which was good in the sense that the project involved um, getting logging in and sort of remotely controlling a telescope, which was quite fun. There's two different topics that you can pick. Again, if you want to do an active one, the group for the group project, if you want to do them where you have to be told this is when you have to log in, then it's a telescope. If you want to be more flexible, there's another thing where you don't use a telescope and I think you just use a database. So you can pick on that side, but again, it involves a group project. And with all group projects, there's always people who don't even show up. There's people who don't do the work. There's others that are always on it and they make you feel like you're not doing anything. It wasn't as good as I expected it to be. So I'm still happy I did it because I don't know which one I would have picked otherwise. Maybe electromagnetism, but I've heard that's quite tough in terms of the physics of it. So this one wasn't difficult, but it was a lot of information and the group project just made it worse. You have to use new softwares, which is quite fun for me to analyze uh, photos of the sky with stars and that kind of thing. So I did enjoy that, but I just didn't enjoy that it was a group project. If it was the same thing, but done individually, I would have enjoyed it much, much more. And yeah, that's, that's my criticism for this one. 
And then I did MST 326 Mathematical Methods and Fluid Mechanics, which I don't enjoy the side of the methods, but I did want to learn more about fluid mechanics. And it was a maths module, but it was also mixed with the physics side, so I quite enjoyed it. And I got a grade 2 pass, 7 to 1. So again, not great. Four TMAs, which I got 94, 89, 95, and 90. And in this one, the exam counted 80%, and then 20% was the assessment. You can also take your annotated handbook to the exam. Again, very good. The level three classes I did throughout COVID. So the first two that I mentioned, the exam was done at home and you could have any time to do it during the day. So those were good. But this last two, so this one and the last one that I'm gonna talk about, they made them so difficult. The exam was literally just things that I had literally not even seen. This one was fine in that sense, kind of but a bit more difficult, but there was a lot crammed into that one module. I feel like it wanted to cover it too much and it just didn't really work and it made it too fast paced and you didn't have enough time to learn things. But I mean, all in all, it was very similar to some of the other mathematics modules and I did enjoy learning about fluid dynamics. So yeah, it was all right. And the last one was SM358, The Quantum World, which I loved the topics and I loved what it was telling me, but I do have criticism. I got a grade to pass 72. Again, uh, the exam lowered it. The exam was the most difficult thing I've seen in my life. Anyone who I've talked to who has done it said the same. They asked things that they hadn't asked in any papers any year before, things that I couldn't even find in the book during the exam. It took me four hours to do the exam, like actual four hours to do the exam. I couldn't even find the things I thought I was gonna fail this module when I did the exam. The exam counts for 100%, so if you don't do good at the exam, you're done for it. It had six ICMAs and four TMAs, which I didn't even bother to do properly because at this point I was a bit done with the degree and I knew that they were not gonna count. So I, you know, you have to get to a certain point to pass, but that's, you know, I. I'd still got 74, 80, 90, and 80, but yeah, this, the TMAs were fine, but they didn't prepare you for the exam, so that's my criticism. It was very, very interesting, and I loved it, but it was so difficult on the math side and on the integrals that you have to do. They were so complicated, I did not have the mental power to do them, I found it awful in that sense, and the fact that it's 100% the exam to me just didn't really help, so I was very frustrated with this one, and I at least I liked what I was studying, because otherwise I just wouldn't have been yeah, I wouldn't have the mental capacity to bother with it, but... So yeah, those are all the modules that I studied. That was my whole process at the Open University. If you guys have any questions about any of them, please leave them in the comments. I've gone a bit fast because my camera is flashing at me and I've already tried to charge it and it wasn't working. If you're going to study an Open University degree, best of luck to you. It's a whole process, the good and the bad. I really enjoyed mine, so I hope you enjoy yours. If you're doing the same one, let me know in the comments and hopefully I can help you uh, with some stuff. But yeah, it's an amazing process, but also takes so long to do, takes so much of your time. In the last few years, I was just like, I can't, I don't want it anymore, I don't want it. I just wanted to finish it and, you know, I did get it in the end. If you're starting, if you're in the middle of it and you're like, you don't see the end of it, you'll get there, it happens, you can finish it and yeah. Physics and maths is an amazing thing. I kind of, I'm still glad I did the mathematics and physics one because I feel like the maths side helped me with the physics side and it helped me balance the grades a bit more. I feel like if I didn't have that math space, I wouldn't have gotten distinctions in some of the modules where I did or I don't think I would have done as well. So it definitely helped me to gain better scores and better understanding of the topics of the physics side, but the math side was much much tougher in the learning side although the exams because you were able to have the annotated handbooks for all my maths modules that really really helped and i didn't have that for the physics ones you had uh, equation booklets for some of them but because some of them had like seven pages of equations so yeah it's helpful in a way but not really because they don't have what they are so yeah and the covid exams just made it so much worse I feel like going forward, I hope they go back to physical exams because for me, those were much better than the ones at home. Obviously, the first COVID year where I had eight hours, 10 hours to do the exam, 
that was my preferred method it resembled the assignment side more and I had more time to look into it and to think about it and that for me was more helpful but I know that it's not the preferred method of examination for university so I do get that but yeah when it was the second year of COVID and they made it so difficult that I couldn't even find this stuff in the book or online. I feel like there's a problem there because yeah, I, it was things that, I mean, I didn't have the time to look it up online, but I did later on and I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it anywhere in the book, in my notes, nothing. So I feel like they tried to overcompensate and it didn't really work. It made it really difficult and yeah, it made my experience that year just that little bit worse so yeah that is my criticism but again overall loved everything and overall i'm really really happy i did it it's a crazy thing to do and i don't know if i'll do it again with a masters but i've done a video on this but yeah if i do i will definitely let you guys know and speak about my experience but yeah that's everything and i hope you guys liked it if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys later with another video